Okay, okay. welcome to this recording. This is just a, a chat about finding domains of functions. This is a point of difficulty for many students because it's the first time they've maybe thought about or talked about this subject. Now let's remember what the domain of a function is. Okay, the domain is all of the possible x values that can be used in that function. So looking at this first function, f of x equals 3x squared plus 4, what you're asking when you find the domain of a function is what values can I plug in for x and still get a valid answer. If you have a polynomial like this one, 3x squared plus 4, polynomials, there's nothing you can do. Um, there's no real number you could plug in that would make an error. So for this function, and any time you have a polynomial, typically your domain is going to be all real numbers. We could put anything we wanted in for our x, and it would be okay. We can square any real number, and it's going to come out all right. Um, to write this in interval notation, so you could just say all real numbers, or in interval notation, we say from negative infinity to infinity. So we put parentheses, negative infinity, comma, infinity. That means everything from negative infinity to infinity. Notice those are parentheses because we can't really include the number infinity because it's not an actual defined number. It just means we're going on and on forever. Let's look at the second option here. Now, down here, I purposely picked these specific examples. Because where problems happen in your domain, one of the first places they can happen is if you have a fraction with an x or your variable in the denominator. And the problem with those is that you cannot have a denominator of 0. Go ahead and try it on your calculator. Divide anything by 0, and you're going to get undefined. Okay, we cannot divide by 0. So the number in the denominator of a fraction cannot equal 0. So when we consider our domain, we know that whatever is in the denominator can't equal 0. So whatever makes x plus 2 equal 0 is going to be excluded from our domain. So we just take our denominator and we set it equal to 0 and solve it. And we find that if x is negative 2, that would make our denominator 0. So our domain is going to be all real numbers except for negative 2. And you can write that as all real numbers x not equal to negative 2. Or you can write it as, in interval notation, we would go from negative infinity to negative 2 and stop there. Use parentheses, because we don't want to include that. Then you put a u to join these two sets together. We start again at negative 2 and go to infinity. And what does that do? It means we're having all numbers except for negative 2. It kind of cuts it out. Since we just have parentheses there, it means we're not including negative 2, but we're going to infinity in each direction, so we're including everything but that. Okay, so anytime you have an x in the denominator of a fraction, whatever number would make that denominator 0 has to be excluded from your domain because it makes it undefined. Okay, another place we can have trouble is with our example here h of x equals the square root of x plus 1. Now, what would make a square root undefined? When you're finding the square root of a number, which ones do you have trouble with that are impossible? <laughs> and that would be when we're taking the square root of a negative number, because that's not a real number. So anytime you have a square root, a radical with an even index, this is a square root, okay? Whatever is underneath there, has to be greater than or equal to 0. We can take the square root of 0. So if it's equal to 0, that's fine. But it has to be greater than 0. So you just take whatever is under the radical, set it greater than or equal to 0, and solve that. So I would subtract 1 here, and I get x is greater than or equal to negative 1. You can write the domain this way. That's perfectly OK with me. However, in this class, you're going to see a lot of things in interval notation, so let's just practice how it would look. We're going to start for at negative 1 and go to a positive infinity. Notice I had a square bracket this time because it can be equal to negative 1. Okay, and for our final example, we have a 
fraction with an x in the denominator, but that is also under f square root. So we have two things to consider. First of all, the denominator cannot equal zero. Secondly, whatever is under the root has to be greater than or equal. So really what happens here is whatever is under the root has to be just strictly greater than zero, not equal to. If it's equal to, it makes our denominator zero. Okay, so again, we just solve this, and we get x is greater than negative 1 is our domain. Notice it's a little different because it's not equal to. If it's equal to, it makes the denominator zero and make it invalid. In interval notation, that domain would look like a parenthesis at negative 1 to infinity. And there's our answer. So there's just a quick rundown of finding domains of basic functions. Again, if you have a polynomial function, all real numbers is usually your domain. The only place you're going to run into trouble in the domain and have to exclude numbers is if you have an x in the denominator or you have an x under a square root.